Sometimes God speaks to me. Wakati mwingine Mungu huninenea. In very strange ways. Katika njia za kutisha. Sometimes he speaks to me. Wakati mwingine ananenea. When I'm speaking. Wakati ninanena. And he gives me a totally new a revelation ananipa ufunuo tofauti kabisa as i am speaking kama ninavyonena sasa he just gives me another re- a revelation ananipa ufunuo tofauti and whenever i hear that sort of thing in my spirit it comes to confirm inakuja kudhibitisha um, the truth of god ukweli wa mungu of some facts that he has been uh, releasing upon my spirit wa ukweli amekuwa akiacha katika roho yangu sometimes wakati mwingine it comes to Um, elevate me to in, another level inakuja kuniinua kiwango tofauti and in other times wakati mwingine pia i really don't know if i should speak it or it's mine sijui. or it's for another place sijui ni nene ni yangu ama ni ya maeneo hii ama mengine i knew i need to come and speak lakini hii nilijua lazima nije ni shiriki na purpose because god has commissioned me to I pray for some people here kwa kusudi moja mungu ameniuliza niombe watu fulani speak about the importance of spiritual covering. Ninataka kunena kuhusu muhimu wa ufuniko wa kiroho. We're going to look at the book of 1 Samuel. Samuel wa kwanza. Chapter 19. Sura ya 19. First Samuel. Samuel wa kwanza. Chapter 19. Sura yake ni 19. And uh, I'd like to start from verse 18. Stari wa 18 nitaanza. I want to start from verse 18. Nianze mstari wa 18. If you're there we can read. Kwa pale tusome. That uh, The Bible says so David fled and escaped and came to Samuel to Rama or in Rama and told him all that Saul had done to him and he said and he and Samuel went and dwelt in Neoth and it was told Saul saying behold David is at Neoth in Rama and Saul sent messengers to take David and when they saw the company of the prophets prophesying and Samuel standing as a, as appointed over them the spirit of god was upon the messengers of Saul and they also prophesied it's very important to note that um, Samuel was standing as appointed by god Samuel alikuwa anasimama kama mtaule wa Mungu verse 21 and when it was told so he sent other messengers and they prophesied likewise maybe interpreters will move okay so verse 21 i'm in verse 21 just interpret and yes. when it was told so liambiwa, he sent other messengers and they prophesied likewise wa wakati, pia. and and so sent messengers again time. Tena mara and they also prophesied na wao pia wakatabiri then went he also to rama kisha yeye mwenyewe akaenda rama saul himself came to rama saul mwenyewe akaenda rama and came to a great well that is in sechu akakuja katika kisima kikubwa mafiko kule seku and he asked and said akauliza na kusema where are samuel and Je, david wako wapi samuel na daudi and one said na mtu mmoja akamwambia lord they be at neoth in rama tazama wako na yothi huko rama and he went thither to neoth in rama basi akaenda na na yothi huko rama and the spirit of god was upon him also na roho mungu akamjiria yeye pia and he went on akaendelea mbele prophesied huko akitabiri until he came to neoth paka akafika na yothi don't forget usisahau he is coming to look for david anakuja kumtafuta daudi because when saul wanted to kill david wakati saul alitaka kumwa daudi david ran away daudi akatoroka when his wife who is the daughter of uh, saul told her that his father wants to kill him wakati mke wake bintu wa saul alimwambia kama babake anataka kumua and where does he run to anatorokea wapi to rama anaenda kule rama where samuel dwelt mahali samuel aliishi in a small place called neoth kwa mahali padogo panaitwa nayothi sometimes when i got so much um, spiritually um, 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 inspired wakati nahuishwa katika kiroho you know, sometimes ago i got spiritually inspired wakati mwingine nahuishwa you know, i always wanted to um, connect with this uh, uh, mispa um, of samuel nilitaka kujiunganisha na mispa ya so, samuel one time i'm in israel wakati mwingine niko kule israel and my friend bilga rafiki yangu bilga pia and uh, he said we, we, we are going to check out on a place that samuel dwelt nataka kwenda kuangalia maeneo ambayo samuel aliishi it's not in the 
sio kweli katika Israeli came just to understand at particular moment nikakuja kufahamu wakati God want to fulfill the, my desire Mungu anataka kufurahisha shauku yangu with the prophetic uh, mispa in Israel yakujiunganisha na mispa ya kinabii Israel the name of mispa Israel. is a Jewish name na ki, which just Yahudi. means an elevated place ambao inanena kuhusu so mahali palipo inuliwa um, um, many mispas kuna mizipa nyingi but there is this mispa lakini kuna mizipa in Rama kule Rama an elevated place mahali palio inuliwa juu there is other mispas kuna mizipa zingine Um, um, near, I mean there are so many ni nyingi, I've seen quite a lot of them nimeona nyingi kama and god opened a door mungu akafungua mlango i will go to this is an arab settlement today ni mahali panaishi wa arabu and so we went to visit tukaenenda kutembea i was so amazed nikashangazwa and i felt the power of god kahisi nguvu za kiungu down my life zikishuka juu ya maisha yangu connecting with this so prophetic place kujiunganisha na maeneo haya kinabii so i look upon david nikatazama daudi running all the way akitoroka after hearing that soul want to kill him baada ya kusikia sauli ataka kumuua he runs to um, um, to Samuel's place akakimbilia mahali pa Samueli and when he ran there alipotoroka and Saul learned that he is there Sauli akajua ya kwamba yuko pale akatuma kundi la kwanza ya wajumbe of, of, of soldiers wajumbe wa kwanza to come and kill David waje wa muue Daudi but what had happened lakini ilitendeka nini David Daudi had come to hide alikuwa amekuja kujificha to Samuel kwa ke Samuel i need you to understand who is Samuel ufahamu vizuri Samuel Samuel was the spiritual Um, custodian alikuwa mweka hazina wa kiroho anointing upon the life of Saul and the life of David wa upako juu ya maisha ya Daudi na Sauli so David recognized him Daudi akamtambua as his spiritual covering kama ufuniko wake so, wa kiroho so it was so bad wakati ilikuwa ni mbaya Saul wanted to kill him Sauli alitaka kumuua where does he go to hide anatorokea wapi kujificha in rama kule rama and in neoth na kule na yothi ya rama why kwa nini? This is where Samuel lived. Kwa sababu hapa ndipo Samuel aliishi. Samuel, Samuel I mean, sorry, so Sauli sends a group of his soldiers. Anatuma kikundi cha wajumbe. Kill David. Waje wa Muwe Daudi. When they come, wanapokuja. They come to this near wanafika na Yodhi. Rama, ya Rama. Where Samuel dwelt. Mahali Samuel anatuma. Mahali kuna ufuniko wa kiroho. Samuel. Wa Samuel. I mean of David. Wa Daudi. What happened? Kwa nini litendeka? They start prophesying. Wakaanza kutabiri. They are caught up. Wamekamatwa. With the spirit of the prophecy. Na roho ya unabii. Then he sends another group. Akatuma kikundi kingine. The same thing happened. Ikatendeka pia. He sent another group. Akatuma kikundi cha tatu. The same thing happened. Jambo lile likatendeka tena. Now he decided I must go. Sasa akasema lazima niende mwenyewe. Can you see Saul coming very annoyed? Angalia Saulo anakuja na ghadhabu. With a lot of disrespect. Akiwa hana heshima. He knows there. Anajua pale. Is where uh, Samuel lived. Ndipo Samuel anaishi. The man of God mtu wa Mungu who anointed him aliyempaka mafuta who released the prophetic anointing on his life wa kinabiji wa maisha yake he came akakuja an anointed man mtu amekashirika without any respect ambaye hana heshima ready mtu ambaye uko tayari kufanya vita maybe not only to David pengine si kwa Daudi tu but also maybe to some, to Samuel lakini pia hata kwa Saul he came to come in akakuja ameamua Samuel will not hinder him ya kwamba Samuel hatamzuia kutenda kila anataka kumtendea Daudi the bible says maandiko inasema nini he went thither to Neoth in Rama akaenda kule Neoth ya Rama and the spirit of god was upon him na roho wa mungu akamshukia and he went on akaendelea and prophesied akaanza kutabiri pia i need to remind you nataka nikukumbushe this is not the first time hii si wakati wa kwanza wa Sauli kutoa unabii when he was anointed alipopakwa mafuta wakati punda za baba yake got lost zikapotea and god led him to somewhere mungu akamuongoza kwa samueli the bible says maandiko inasema nini samuel told him samuel akamwambia when you come out of this place unapondoka maeneo haya all these signs hii ishara zote zitatimizwa and you are um, whatever your hand finds to do na kila mkono wako umeamua kutenda mungu atakuwa na wewe and the bible says maandiko inasema when some, i mean Saul came out of that place wakati sauli alitoka maeneo yale when he arrived in gibea wakati alifika gibea kulikuwa na msururu ya watu ambao ni manabii walikuwa kitabia and Saul the king sauli mfalme i mean came in line with the prophet akakuja sambamba na nabii he began to prophesy akaanza kutabiri pia it was a sign ilikuwa ni ishara ya kwamba amejiunganisha with the spirit of samuel na roho ya samueli who was the 
the prophet of the day. But now this time, lakini sasa wakati huu, he is prophesying not out of his will. Si kwa sababu anataka. Remember his mission. Kumbuka misheni yake. Was to come. Ilikuwa kuja. And attack David. Kumvamia Dawidi. And the Bible says, Mandiko inasema. In verse 24. Mustari wa 24. That is striped naked. Akaweza kujitoa, akatoa He removed his clothes. Akatvua nguo zake. And prophesied. Akatabili before Samuel. Bere ya Samuel. And he lay down naked. Akalala uchi mchana. All the day and all the night. Mchana kutwa na usiku kucha. Hey, do you understand? Mefahamu. This is the king. Huyu ni mfalme. He came to fight. Amekuja kupigana. And now he's caught up by the spirit. He's being ashamed by the spirit. The Bible says he did not only prophesy the normal way. He removed his clothes the whole day, the whole night, and he slept there prophesying. The Bible doesn't tell us what he was prophesying about. But you can imagine the king who came to kill his enemy, he is caught up by the spirit. And not only that, he looks to be crazy. How can you prophesy naked? No, I need you just to imagine. I know you are very spiritual people and God bless you. But these are things that happen. Amen. And I can enjoy David. David was there, looking the doing of God to his enemies. And God was fighting. But why did this happen? It's only because David came to the place of his spiritual covering. I need to say some few statements that great men attain their great victory in the area of their calling because God places them under greater generals in the ministry. As it, we know very well, in the skyscraper, these tall buildings, the much it goes up depends with the foundation. Even our, meet, our calling, it will depend with our foundation where we stand. Prophet Samuel was a great prophet. Rather a great general. But to attain that level, God put him under another man of God called Eli. It doesn't matter about the state of the family of Eli. And he was left there by his father and his mother. But first Samuel chapter 2 verse 11. The Bible says. And the child did minister. Unto the Lord. Before Eli the, the prophet. And as we go on. Verse 19. That is first Samuel chapter 3. Samuel sura tatu, verse 13. Sura and Samuel grew. Samuel and the Lord was with him. Mungu na ye. And did not let none of his word fall to the ground. Na ni but jini. just remember where he was ministering. Na there wapi. were other boys older than him. Kwa vijana, who are the sons of Eli. Ni wana wa Eli. At that particular time. Ule, you know every bad thing was happening. But it is in this atmosphere that God Mungu. anointed Samuel that Samuel, Samuel had a favor Samuel before kibahe. God. There Mungu. was no any other place because Eli was Eli the high priest kuhani and mkuu. for uh, Samuel, Na kwa ke Samuel to receive kupokea. impartation Upa, and a covering of the calling of God in his life. He had to be put under somebody much higher than him. A great general. It doesn't matter. God may have rejected Saul. But the, I mean, 
Eli. But I want to tell you, the Bible says, the gift of God is without repentance. I need to tell each one of you here, if you think God has finished up with you, you are yet to see great things that God is going to do. I want to speak to every father. I want to speak to every mother. A spiritual mother, a spiritual father, a biological mother, a biological father, that whoever God places in your hand, could be your own son, could be your own daughter, I want to let you know, it's God who has given you that custodian, that you become a custodian of a greater person that will live after you, a person that God is going to use. Even if not at your time, God is going to use those young boys, those young girls, you see run, running around your, your church. So Samuel was put under Eli. And because of his obedience and his submission to the ministry of Eli, God blessed him. And that's where I've read first Samuel, chapter 3, verse 19. And Samuel grew in that atmosphere. And the Lord was with him in that atmosphere. Man, I want to tell you, brother, I want to challenge you. You want to run away from that ministry. You want to run away because the power because the church leaders they don't go in the ways of God but I want to tell you your gauge is not God's gauge your timing is not God's timing you really don't understand why God has placed you there listen to what I say the purposes of God cannot be thwarted I want to tell you no sin can be able to attach itself on the anointed of God if he is not if he is not sinning. I need someone to say thank you, Pastor. If you can, can you say thank you, Jesus? I want to repeat this. It doesn't matter where you pass through, even if you are passing through hell, the devil cannot stop you receiving the purposes of God. I know many of us, God places us in other situations that are very bad. I know many of us us have been placed by God in the hands of bad men, in the hands of bad women. Some of us, we really even don't like to mention where we have been brought up. We don't like our families because they are not believers, because they don't go the right way of God. But I come to challenge you in the name of Jesus. You don't know yet the purposes of God. And nobody can stop the purposes of God being accomplished in your life. It doesn't matter your background. It doesn't matter you come from families of witches. If the hand of God is upon you, nothing can stop you. Can someone raise up your hand and say thank you Jesus for my foundation. Amen. Amen. Let's continue. So you see, God had prepared Samuel for greater assignment, anointing David. And God told Samuel, don't worry about Saul. I have seen a man after my own heart. I need to speak to many ministers that are here. It doesn't matter. The circumstances you are ministering, you must accomplish the purposes of God. And nothing will hinder. Call it finance. Call it people. Call it uh, um, family problems. Marriage problems. Every system that the devil uses to work against our calling. I want to tell you, you must complete your assignment. And you are here on this earth for a special assignment. Samuel was able to come out of Eli's family house. Although it was a family that was cast by God. In the book of 1 Samuel, chapter 2, we see how uh, that family was cast. But I want to tell you, that curse 
did not touch David. I mean, uh, may this man of God call someone. We see in 1 Samuel, Samuel chapter 1. one Samuel be placed Samuel in this family. And in chapter 2, from verse 30, we see the curse of God upon this family. But God's assignment upon Samuel was still there. If, listen, if Samuel made a mistake of running away from that family, God's plan would have been delayed. If Samuel, Samuel said, I cannot live in this house, it's defiled house, I can't be on that altar, it is defiled, the purposes of God would have been delayed. And God could have looked another route to accomplish his purpose. I need someone to agree with me. Or rather disagree with me. So, listen when to this. David's anointing depended so much with commitment, na kujitoa, obedience na of Samuel. Samuel. It depended itegemea, on the um, level kiwango, of Samuel, ya Samuel persevering kufumilia, the many problems shida nyingi, that were in the house of Eli. Did I speak it right? Did you get it? We don't understand. A few weeks ago, I've been speaking about, or rather months, I've been speaking about the mystery of the path that God chooses for us. That was the path of Samuel. I come to encourage you, my brother. I come to encourage you, my sister. That Whatever you are going through, it is because of something bigger than your life of today. You will never know until you come to heaven. Oh, hallelujah. hallelujah. The cost of your suffering, you cannot know it now. But when we come to heaven, it shall be revealed. I come to encourage people who think they are going the last point of their life. I come to tell you, you are not yet. It is not yet over. Not over, my brother. Not over, my brother. Not over, my sister. I thank God for this message, for this revelation. You know, I was just asking God, do, do we have really people who are undergoing what I'm what you're putting in my mind. And I answered myself. I said yes. The, God, the word of God doesn't come void. It must accomplish something. And this word of tonight. I believe in Jesus name. It's going to rip somebody. Out of your comfort zone. It's going to rip somebody. From the grip of the devil. It's going to change your life forever. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let's move on. On. I've just put a statement that Samuel was suffering for the sake of David because a time came and Samuel took over the mantle of Eli and God commanded Samuel to anoint David a man that is going to bring transformation a prophetic transformation not only to the children of Israel but to the whole world I need to tell you your assignment is very special it's very special and God makes sure that your spiritual covering I mean, sorry, at your spiritual covering you are safe. There was nowhere else that God could have placed somewhere apart from the family house of Eli. And look at David. After being anointed, God brings him to the house of, of Saul the king. A man who has been rejected by God. And he's being brought there to receive a covering and an impartation. Although Samuel laid his hand on him, although Samuel anointed him, but he needed another man 
who has been a king, he needed to understand the function of a palace. And there was no any other place that God could bring him. He brought him into the house of Saul. In that house, there were so many tribulations, many problems, threat of death. He had to run away many times. And this particular time he, are are who? he runs away. And where does he go? To Samuel. His spiritual covering. You can see how God is protecting David. I need to tell you at your place of covering, rather at your place of spiritual covering, no devil, no demon can touch you. No devil, no demon can change the purposes of God. It doesn't matter you are going through fire, the fire will not burn you. It doesn't matter you're going through hell the gates of hell will not withhold I thank God for this re revelation there have been such a blessing this day in my inner personality even as I ministered in Nairobi I heard this message even as you we are doing a fellowship in the car as we came I heard this, this, this wonderful revelation oh hallelujah and I believe in Jesus name there is a purpose of God that God would like to change your life. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So Samuel, Samuel was a spiritual covering for David. And he brought him in the house of Saul. And the devil used Saul to try and kill David. But it was not possible. Because he was the anointed of God. But I need you to understand there was another anointed man more than David. For the gift of God are without repentance. But remember Saul was rejected by Saul God. But he remains an anointed. It, and I believe Amen. God Mungu. has placed you somewhere in an anointing that is higher than you for a righteous purpose. I want to tell you, it Mungu. will just be for a time. But you need that high anointing. Even if those elders, they don't wale. pray like you pray. Even even those nomba. pastors, they don't laji. pray the way you pray. Even if you are a bishop, it doesn't do what you do. I want to tell you, the better things are ahead of you. If you submit under the high authority, so David Daudi had many opportunities even to nyingi. kill Hata kumua. Saul the king. Saul but he said, I can never lay my hand on the anointed. The mafuta. soldiers, Wasikari. they told him, God has given your enemies into your hand. But he said, no. We cannot Touch the anointed. You cannot speak against the anointed. Many people are in problem today. Your ministry is not functioning because of the things you spoke, because of the things you did, because of the attitude of your mind, rather of your heart toward the anointed, because of wrong judgment. I need to advise you be like David. Leave them alone. Even if they are seeking you, they are seeking to destroy your ministry. If you can run away, run away like David. David had an opportunity to kill Goliath. And the Bible says, even when he, he tore the piece of his cloth, as he moved out of that, um, um, out of that cave, he felt condemned. So he shouted, to Saul. He, he said, said, my father, my father, you are seeking to kill me, but I cannot put my hand on you. Those are the words of David. He calls this guy who is out of grace, his father. Many of us, 
they don't even want to be associated with those they feel that they are not as anointed as they would like. God doesn't release his anointing the way people wish, the way people want. I need you to understand many families are now in problem because of sitting down and discussing men of God, servants of God, Many families are in problem because they don't have a spiritual cover. Many ministries today, they are suffering because they detach themselves in an ungodly way. Maybe they did it before the timings of God. Maybe they did it out of malice. Maybe they did it out of pride. I am better than. I can do without. I come to tell you, God wants you to come back in a place of repentance and you see great things happening into your ministry. Other people are still suffering in the ministry because when God called them, they think they had a voice directing, directing them that side. For me, sometimes I thought, I'm an evangelist, I'll become a missionary, I did a lot of evangelism, I did a lot of church planting, I, at a point I thought that God will use me in the revival, just to go around and run many years, and I landed into this calling, and I believe this is my calling, there have come a lot of prayer movement, but I have not changed my going, I'm not here because of you. Many of you, I don't know you. I'm here because there is a calling. Oh, hallelujah. hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. People are asking me many questions. You want to tell us we shall be praying and worshiping God 24-7? I said yes. I really didn't understand it. But I just, I just agreed with God. I need to tell you that many of us in this sanctuary today, they need the grace of God. They need a connection back to the grace of God to the place of their covering. Maybe your covering could be um, um, uh, a place just as it was concerning as the man of God, Paul. For the Bible says, after they have ministered outside there, in Japan, they returned back. That is Acts chapter 14, verse 26. After they had passed through Pisidia, they came to Paphilia. Okay, whatever. And when they had preached the word in Pega, they went down to Atalia. Verse 26 is very important. And then sail to Antioch. Uh -uh. And then, okay, we can simple English. This is King James. And then they sailed to Antioch. From where they had been recommended to the grace of God for the work which they have fulfilled. Where they had been committed to the grace. Now, I need you to understand when God called Paul, he had a lot of problems until he went to um, where he was born in Tarsus. Because the disciples were not, of Jesus were not accommodating him. And at a point, God connected him with Barnabas. And Barnabas brought him to, um, uh, um, to Antioch. And there they dwelt for a whole year, fasting, worshipping God. And the Bible says in Acts 13 and verse 2, that while they were worshipping the Lord and fasting, the Holy Spirit said, set apart for me Barnabas and Saul for the work to which I have called them. So after they, have, they, have, they had fasted and prayed, they placed their hand on them and sent them off to go now to complete the commission of God. That's where we see the first missionary of Paul and Barnabas. And God did miracles because they had been in, in, in Antioch where they were released under a particular grace. 
Paul's calling could not receive the grace of Jerusalem. Because at that particular time, the church in Jerusalem was not ready to accommodate the Gentiles. And God set apart Paul and Barnabas. But he brought them to Antioch, a Gentile church that was focusing to the heart of God, that was keeping the fire of the altar burning. A place that people what? had embraced God, the Gentiles, from there, they were released under a particular grace. This grace enabled them to be accepted by the Gentiles. This grace gave them an identity of the calling. This grace Give them an empowerment to accomplish the purpose of God. This grace, it was an anointing that allowed Paul and Barnabas to be able to command the demons. Rather, this grace, when it gave them an identity, every demon came to understand them and understood their commission and understood their connectivity with our Lord Jesus. The Bible says, after preaching everywhere, they came back where they were committed to the grace. I like that. They came to receive another grace. They came to receive another bunch of grace. If I should be allowed to say that. We see this man of God. Oh, hallelujah. They had a covering from Antioch. Not from Jerusalem. From Antioch. That's that's why Barnabas, when he came to fetch Paul, he did not take him to Antioch. I mean, he did not take him to Jerusalem. He brought him to Antioch. That was the covering. Oh, hallelujah. hallelujah. I need you to understand that if you are not connected to the place of your covering, you miss out utakosa. an identity. Utakosa ma you miss out utakosa. the grace of your calling. Nema ya mwito wako. You miss out utakosa. on the empowerment Utiwangu. of your calling. Wa mwito wako. You miss out Utakosa. a foundation Musingi. that even when the whole world shakes, zima you cannot be shaken. You miss out Utakosa. the grace. Nema. And as I said many times, the manajiri. grace Nema. is God's empowerment that kiungu. works through us. Grace is God's ability Nema ni uweza that wakimu. works through us. This is what happened to Paul and Barnabas. They ministered under the grace Chini. of Antioch. Ya neema ya That's why the sorcerers wale wachawi. They bowed down to them. Kings invited them to the palace. To when they commanded, the demons they came off. The Bible says that many people got healed. Even from handkerchiefs. When Paul prayed for the handkerchief, people were healed. The Bible says. They came to a place. They start preaching to the proconsul. And there was a sorcerer who tried to block them. We see the authority in the life of Paul. He said, you have misled many out of the grace of God. From today, you will not see. You will become blind. And that man became blind that moment. Now we see Paul and Barnabas, they have an ability Hallelujah. Hallelujah. from God. It's very frustrating to work Akushusha. in the ministry without godly authority, without godly 
um, empowerment without godly favor. It is very frustrating. I want to tell you that your life will be disappointing. Tonight I've come with this message that many of you work in a pathetic situation. It's as if you are, you are, you are, you are you're squeezing out yourself. Many of you have been wondering, does really God exist in my life? I pray for other people. I minister to other people. They seem to be going ahead. I'm stagnant. Am I going anywhere? One of the miss out in the ministry is when you lack the grace of your Antioch. Because God will place you somewhere. People may call it your mother church. The ground where you are rooted. I come to ask you brethren, are you sure of where you are rooted? That it has a grace of God. It has an empowerment of God to catapult you to the height of your calling. I want to ask you a question. Are you sure your foundation is founded on the principles of Jesus Christ that the grace that was upon Jesus to accomplish the work of God works in your life. I came to ask you when you come into trials, when you come into temptation, do you have an ability to break through? When you meet mountains, do you have that ability of climbing those mountains? Do valleys come up? When you are going through desert, does God command the desert to wells to come out of the desert. David understood this secret. He was had an anointing under Samuel. And he knew his ground is Rama. And he comes to Rama. And when he comes to Rama, it doesn't matter who is seeking his face. God is out to ashamed the enemies. Not by your hand. I need somebody to say thank you, Pastor. This this is a great revelation. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I pray in Jesus' name. If there is anything that has dragged you out of the ground of your grace, may the Lord restore you now. May the Lord restore you today. May the Lord restore you today. In the mighty name of Jesus. Some people are like the sons of Skeva. The Bible says that there were people who were trying to exercise demon-possessed people. There were some people who were preaching the gospel by trying to evoke the name of Jesus who is preached by Paul. That is Acts of the Apostles chapter 19. They came to bind demons in the name of Jesus whom Paul preaches. I command you to come out. Such people are the seven sons of Skepha. In Acts chapter 19, verse 14, it talks about these seven sons of a Jewish priest. Unfortunately, they were sons of a priest. I want to tell you, your religious foundation cannot help you. Religiosity is not Christianity. Do you understand what I'm talking about? I come to let you know there are some religious leaders who are not serving the purposes of God. There are some churches that are not serving the purpose of God. The Holy Spirit who is the custodian of God's promises went out of that church if not through the door then through the window. And people have been left to do what they want. People have been left to say what they want. They have no sense, spiritual senses to understand about sin, to understand when the Holy Spirit is grieved. I come to pray for you tonight. I ask you to stand up wherever you are. I feel a heavy anointing of praying for you that the power of God will rock you out of such foundation in the name of Jesus. 
I know how much you love it. But if God purposes are not fulfilled in that foundation and you have a purpose of God of existing in this world, lift up your hand. I pray in Jesus' name. I pray in Jesus' name. Every foundation that is not of God that the devil has created for your life, I break it now. Every system that has been holding you captive, I break it in the mighty name of Jesus. I declare the purposes of God will not be thwarted in your life. I declare my brother it shall not be thwarted. And I pray for the power of God to pull you out, to separate you in Jesus' name. Sit down in Jesus' name. I'm just about to finish up three quarters. I've gone out three quarters. Listen. This is a message that maybe you never hear about it. This is a revelation that maybe you never see about it. I want to tell you don't miss out today. You need to confront some of these religious foundations that they deny the power of the Holy Spirit. You need to separate yourself. The Bible says separate yourself. At least you'll be destroyed when they are destroyed. Listen, my brother. Listen, my sister. I really honor your baptism. I really honor of your wedding ceremony. I really honor the much they helped you. I really honor that your mother, your grandfather, your grandmother, I mean all of them, they belong to that dini. But if it is a dini, that does not honor the move of God. Come out. Go and search in prayer, in intercession. And I know some people are here for this purpose. God has brought you to Mizpah so that you can be able to connect with the source of Mizpah, with the grace of Mizpah. When you go wherever you go, you shall minister in power. Many of you will be out in foreign countries. Many of you will become leaders of great denomination that testify the risen Christ in the name of Jesus. I pray for you in Jesus' name. Don't be like sons of Sceva. The Bible says they, they invoked the name of Paul and the demons inside a madman. They say, Paul we know, Jesus we know, whom are you? And the Bible says, they knocked off these people. They beat them up. And the Bible says, look at your Bible clearly. Verse 16. Then the man who had the evil spirit jumped on them and overpowered them. All of them, seven of them, he gave them such a beating that they ran out of that house naked and bleeding. What a pity. People who came to cast out demons, the demons were after them. Many of us are having serious demonic attack. Not because we are not saved. Not because you are not preaching right. But your problem is what grace are you functioning with? There are graces that can never fly, I mean command a fly to sorry kuna neema ambazo hazia mulisha inzi kutoka juu ya ugali hata ukifunga na uongee na lugha haielewi lakini kuna graces amen mapepo yakiona ukipita inakwenda moja kwa moja moja kwa moja we are going to preach somewhere in kitale up in mount elgon my friends came in earlier 
they arrived in this small center called Getwamba. It's in olden days. There was only a shop on this side and uh, a ka hotel. When they alighted the, 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 the matatu, they went to take a cup of tea. It was drizzling. And on the other side of the road, it was raised up. So they are there in that ka hotel. They have drunk their tea and mandasi. They came outside because it was drizzling, raining. And they were waiting for the people to come and receive them from the church. And on this small raised ground, a madman came. Naked. He didn't have a slave, only a kishat. I know he stood there. You know what he said? Oh, come more than a matu ekire tiko shembere mwe. And he mentioned that dini. Hey, so my brother said, told the other brothers, did you hear that? Those are demons. Yeah. We pray God, this guy, when he comes around this veranda, I'll get hold of him, put him down. I'll sit on him. And your work is to chase away the demons in the head, in the leg, in the stomach, everywhere. And this guy who was sitting on this madman was a huge man. He was called uh, Minister Gitao. I mean, he was a great man of God, I know. Now he's going to rest with God. I mean, he was a huge man. Maybe I couldn't touch his head. He was tall. Huge. He sat on this madman. I like people who have physical strength. Some demons. If these sons of Keba were like that one, they could have pambana with these demons. Even if they had fasted, but they didn't have an authority. They were not working under any grace. This demon went away. When my brothers cast them out, they went away. But it was rejoicing. He said, here, we, are, we always have a free day. Nobody can touch us. Because all the plowing, this have been have, are destroyed. They can't work. So my brother understood that the church is here. Something is wrong. The ministers here. Something is wrong. Let me tell you something. When that man rose up, they put him in the hotel, gave him mandazi and chai. They removed their clothes from their bags. They dressed him. People went to bring the chief. And the crusade began there. Many people got saved. And from that was miracles. And miracles. And miracles. Because they had an authority. Where they came from. They came from a ground. That sent them. With a grace. To confront every demonic spirit. Check out yourself. Check out your ministry. Check out your, your church. Which grace does it function with? Check out Azamia. your calling. Mwitawako. Which grace? Nineema gani? There are graces Kuna neema. that the devil doesn't, doesn't mind. Amo shetani hajari. There are graces Kuna neema, the devil can never, never shetani hawezi kata. come near. Karibia. They know his fire. Wanajua ni moto tupu. They will be kicked out. So they pretend they are not there. When the demons thought that the business is as usual, in the first encounter after Antioch with Paul and Barnabas, they thought it's the same Paul. They thought it's the same Barnabas. And then they tried to confront that day their business was canceled. Their business came to an end. Some other demons, they thought they know Paul well. So they follow Paul, shouting about him. And uh, I can see Paul and Barnabas. You know, um, um, being filled up with a, a holy anger. And they turn to this girl, cast out demons. And the child was healed. It was not business as usual. Antioch Antokia. was their place of grace. We need to pray tonight. These days you are here. Hizo you hapa. need to demolish graces Neema. that has not helped you. Ambo you need to denounce them. You need to say no. One time, 
as God was ushering us into this other particular grace. Mungu alikuwa anatulisha katika hii neema. I know my lady was in that meeting. Najua wa mlidi alikuwepo. I really said, nikasema, we need to tapika some foundations. Kuna misingi ya lazima vomit. Lazima tutapike some foundations. Misingi ya. We need to vomit. Lazima tutapike some words. Maneno fran. From our foundation. Kutoka misingi ya. From where we were brought up. Kutoka mahali tulizaliwa. Spiritually. Katika kiroho. We used to do a lot of work. Ministering in many parts of, of Kenya. Katika maeneo mengi ya Kenya. And we went on suffering. Tuliendelea kutesa. We minister. Tunahudumu and we can't get even 50 shillings to put fuel on our cars. Hata tuweze kupata shilingi 50 shillings. You minister in a church for a week. Hudumu wa kazi. The only thing they can give you is 500 shillings. Wanakupa 500 peke yake. I minister in Europe. Nikahudumu Europe. For a month. Miezi. And nobody tells me thank you. Hakuna mtu akusema asante. With a five cents. Hata kwa peni tano. I preach in America. Nahubiri Marekani. Until one day I said, finish that business. Nimemaliza hiyo kazi. I fasted. Nikafanya sasa I prayed. Nikaomba. I brought my, my wife into the picture. We prayed. We prayed. Tukaomba. We came here many many times. We refused to go to our denomination church many years. Now we started coming here. We prayed. Tukaomba. We prayed. until sometimes we didn't pray. Mpaka wakati wewe tukuma. We just started praying and we are tired finish. We had fasted. The body had no strength. And we were saying, God, detach us from foundation that blocks our blessing. Father, detach. We confess the sins of our fathers. We confess the sins of our denomination. Because the denomination I came from, two denominations, they used to say, we are not preachers of Mushahara. So they denounce the truth of God that a man of God has a right to eat. And haki ya kula. Hey. Sikuizi bwana lakini bariki Mungu akubariki sana. Hey. Achukuaga haraka. Ili ubariki. But before I didn't used to take. Kabla mimi siko nachukua sadaka. But other otherwise people didn't used to give me. Watu pia hako akilipa mimi. Today they give me. Leo wananipatia. I don't ask for them to give. Hata siwaulizi wanipatia. They are commanded. Because of the grace. Kwa sababu ya hiyo neema. Many ministers are suffering today. Kwa huduma wengi wanateseka. Because of lack of that grace. Kwa sababu wamekosa hiyo. Where is your grace? Neema yako iko wapi? I give you an assignment tonight. Nimekupa jukumu siku ya leo. Through from front going backward. Fanya kazi mbele nyuma. Check out. Angalia. What is your foundation? Je, msingi wako ni upi? Check out. Tazama. What is your foundation? Msingi wako ni upi? Praise the name of the Lord. Wanasifiwe. Don't be like these vagabond Jews. Usikue kama hao watu wa kutangatanga. King James calls them vagabond Jews who exercise spirit. Watu ambao ni ambao ni proclaiming the name of Jesus that Paul preaches. Wanatangaza jina la Yesu. They got what they were looking for. Walipata walichokitafuta. You need a spiritual base Unahitaji msingi that will wakiwa. cover you. Ambo itakufunika. You need a spiritual base Unahitaji that demons ya will recognize. Ambo mapepo ita They recognized Walitambua. the calling of Paul and Barnabas. People brought apron. Watu wakaleta mamazi yao. You know, verse 11 of chapter 19. Kumina moja. God did extraordinary miracles through Paul. Kafanya mamu makuku bitia Paul. So that even handkerchiefs. Yo hata kimitama. And aprons. Na hata nguwa. That had touched him. Bazi ni mguza. Was taken to the sick. Zili perekewa wakonjo. And their illness. Na ugonjo wao. Wa cured. Uka ponywa. And the evil spirit. Na mapepo cha. Left them. Zika ondoka. Because they recognized. Kwa sabu wa ilitambua. The grace. Neema. I've been to meetings with anointed men of God. One of them is Marehemu um, 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 Patrick Chege. I went to him, uh, Patrick Chege. some places. He just used to speak things. He built my faith. I, I, I received so much from him. Praying for the sick. I mean, commanding our day. He's a man who lived through miracles. I didn't know God has brought me into their life Mungu to pick up something <laughs> so that I may have that foundation. One of the things when I was uh, connected with the banana uh, in the church of the Lord that is uh, under Margaret, Bishop Margaret, was, I was every, every time amazed how people send her tickets to preach abroad. Every other time. I was there with her, I mean with other people, so I knew all these things. And I was, we used to wonder with my friend Mark, how happened this 
James, servant of God, he receives all these tickets. Ticket, his is all tick. Many dollars. The, the dollar I didn't know. Some years are coming when my ticket will be paid. Yours is there. Yes. It depends. Foundation. Amen. I need to finish up now. But I'm giving you an assignment. Biblia yetu ya kizuri nasema mwetu eliei omudu kichunguze we mwenyewe check out yourself and see if you are still on the faith jichunguze uone kama kweli bado umesimama kwa imani check out jichunguze your foundation msingi wako each one of us kila mmoja wetu needs a base that demons will tremble when their names are mentioned. So my big question, who is your cover? Do you, where do you hide when the devil attacks? I've seen people, many people come to hide at Mizpah. I always give a lot of testimonies. But I, this one testimony was very moving. Because I've had Testimonies. Some of them shuda. I cannot speak them in the public. You know, uh, this woman who, whose husband died, and she was chased away by the relatives. They said, we cannot bury so and so. Our brother, when she is young, and she came to Mispa, she didn't tell anybody. She was here like four or five days. The, the day he went back, when he came to Nakuru Bar stage, he met people, relatives of the husband, looking for her. Because when they, they learned, they said, our brother is not going to be buried until his wife comes back. They took her to her family. The other brothers had to run away. I like that one. Coming to hide. Where the grace of God is. I want to ask you another question. Which altar speaks to you on, on your behalf? Which altar? Paul's altar was in Antioch. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I pray in Jesus' name. That God will restore you to your rightful altar. When Paul was rejected by the church in Jerusalem, God took him to Antioch. But he never forgot the altar of God in Jerusalem. So I'm not saying that that altar is not godly. But I want to tell you, you need a cover that even heaven will release its power and authority over your life. The ministry of Paul was never the same again. Because he was a general. general. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. May the Lord bless you. Mungu May the Lord bring you Mungu to understand. Kufahamu. I believe this is for you today, Na tonight. Dini yako siku. Even those people who are listening to this message. Hata no, I believe Na this is your message. Hili ujume wako. And it will change your life. Taka uza maisha and God has called you for a purpose. Mungu mekuita kwa kusudi. And God can never let you go. That's why you are still breathing tonight. That's, today you are still breathing somewhere. It's not yet over. You think it's over? I can tell you it's not yet over. And I pray for you that the Lord Jesus will stretch his hand in Jesus' name and bring you under men and women whom God have assigned to release you to your prophetic destiny. Malahana brought somewhere, the baby somewhere to Eli. And that was the end of problem. And God must bring you somewhere. And God must bring you under some people. Pray that the right people will come about your life. Pray 
that the suffering you are going through will come to an end. The suffering that your family is going through will come to an end. Maybe at a place you didn't honor your mother, your father. I mean the biological mother and father. They hold God's mandate for your future. Your spiritual leaders doesn't matter. Their life was not good. But they hold God's mandate for your future. Maybe you missed it out. Our God is a God of second chance. Many people, the Bible says, they lose they live in problem because they have no knowledge and understanding of how things work. And today you have heard how things of God work. May the Lord bless you. Let's stand in Jesus' name. Sometimes I don't know how to end such a a wonderful revelation. And I just want to leave it there. For the Holy Spirit has his way of bringing forth the purposes of God. Sometimes we think when we shout, it's true when we shout sometimes, heaven opened up. But even sometimes, when we let the truth sink into our heart. And when we open our heart and say, Jesus, I agree with you. Holy Spirit, I agree. Something is wrong. I cannot make it myself. Release my Balnabas. Lead me to my Antioch. In the mighty name of Jesus. Just soak yourself in the presence of God. A few seconds in Jesus' name. Focus unto God. Don't worry your neighbor. It's your time of crossover. Coming out of your area of suffering. To connect yourself. With the area. Of God's protection. Of the empowerment of God. That's the place of your grace. I pray in Jesus' name. Guide each one of us, God, to the areas of our grace. Connect us with people who are going where we're going. Connect us with people who have gone ahead of us as Eli went ahead of Samuel. Oh, Father, in Jesus' name, we pray that you connect my brethren tonight in Jesus' name. Connect them 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 in Jesus' name. With the place of the Antioch, your altar, that will speak direct to their heart. An altar that will give them a cover, a security that every demon will understand that God has anointed the man of God, that God has anointed the woman of God. I pray, Lord Jesus, for people who are suffering financially just because they missed out on the area of their grace. I pray for a spirit of restoration. You are a God of second chance. Release your grace in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus.